Welcome to a new episode of the Stick and Move podcast. I'm your host, Trey, here with my co-host, Sam. And today we are breaking down the fight of the year, knockout of the year, and fighter of the year. So let's just get right into it. Sam, let's hit me in the face, knock me out. What was your knockout of the year of 2023, my man? And ours, well, my my knockout of the year was just recent. And... Okay. um. Uh, um, uh, mine was the, the um, Chris Colbert versus Rayo Venezuela. Venezuela, um, it, 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 they, they had fun before, and mm-hmm. Chris Colbert had won by decision that many believed uh, Venezuela was robbed. Right, right. You know, and, and it was, it was, I mean, I, I thought he was robbed. And right. um, so, so they finally get the rematch, bro. They finally mm-hmm. get the rematch. Venezuela in the sixth round, bro, knocked him out. Knocked him out, bro. And right. I think you saw the highlight, right? Right, 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 of course. And and it, it was just a de- – dude, I mean, it was a knockout, bro, like Marquez when he knocked out Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Bro. Lights the dude out, was bro. laying lights out. It, it, it you know, flatlined him, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no questions about it. Rayo mm-hmm. came to destroy him, and um, they even had a side bet of fifty thousand dollars. I saw you know, that, Chris, man. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where where he's like fifty thousand, you won't knock me out. Fifty thousand, I'll knock you out. And right. sure enough, bro, he knocked him out. And here's a here's a crazy thing about that that knockout right there. I know they had the fifty thousand dollar purse on the line, dude. Even then, he did not even like accept the defeat by knockout he's like oh we're even we're even you know what i'm saying like, oh yeah that kind of oh, bothered yeah. me a little yeah. bit yeah he was like we're one on so. one yeah yeah we're one on one that's right and you know when i see the first fight bro dude that was one of those robberies that you and i were gonna have to review on a different episode because to me that was blatant now it's interesting because when i watched the first fight and even the the the, the rematch brother Dude, Venezuela to me doesn't really have that that traditional fighting stance that I'm used to. I mean, to me, it's just it's just uh, they kind of seem a little green when it comes to boxing, even though they are seasoned boxers. But their style, I'm not really attracted to uh, for both of them. But compared from the first fight to the second fight, you're right, dude. Venezuela took advantage. I think totally controlled both fights and that knockout bro is one to remember for sure definitely oh yeah 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 it 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 was a knockout bro that um uh, um many fans were waiting for they knew that rayo had the power they knew he did and then that robbery was ridiculous and um i'm glad it got settled so yeah go ahead finish your thought yeah for me i mean uh, there was a lot of great knockouts but I went under the radar from all the high, you know, the popular right. fights. No, uh, man, this is a no, knockout man. that I like. This was a fantastic pick. I, I think I had definitely had a, have it on my notes right here. I'm like, that's what I'm looking at. And I'm like, dang, I, I kind of wanted to put that there also. But going to my knockout of the year, I'm going to go with, hey, guys, Trey here. If you love today's controversial episode and you want to see our channel grow, please drop a like, subscribe, and also comment. Sam and I are always going back and forth with those commenters on our controversial topics and opinions, and we love it so much. So go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe, most importantly, so our channel can grow and we can give you guys the best content as possible. Sam and I were always uploading multiple videos a week, and we want to continue doing that, and we need your help. So go ahead and subscribe, guys. And most importantly, like I always say, don't forget to stick and move, baby. Uh, Brian Mendoza versus Sebastian Fondura, bro. Ooh, that was a nice one. Dude, seventh round TK, I mean, seventh round knockout, bro. Now, interestingly enough, Sebastian, he's been like on the rise. He's this giant that 
controls that division that kind of trying to making his his name you know into the boxing uh world at that time you know currently and for me whenever i see that guy fight it's kind of like a little awkward and i don't really understand his dominance because let's call it what it is he has a fantastic record and for a little bit i you know around the covid time he had that that attractive lure that a lot of commentators and a lot of analysts were saying that this Sebastian guy is somebody to look out for in the, in the division. Yeah. But the way he got cracked uh, by Brian Mendoza, man, it just, remember that toy from the 1980s and seventies? Like it was like a little horse or something like that. And you push it on the bottom and then it just falls down like that. You remember that toy? Like, I, no, 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 no. But it, oh, it's it. Well, it yeah, yeah. It's like a little toy. It's a little toy and it had like a little push on the bottom and the legs would crumble down and then you pop it back up and then it'll go straight erect again. You know what I'm oh, saying? No, no. no. I so, well, anyways, the way he knocked him down, it reminded me of that because you saw this stiff, tall, lanky giant with the reach, the size from like here to like the length of the equator, brother. You just saw this lanky giant just fall down, hunch over, and then fall. Like it, it was an impeccable knockout. Nobody was really expecting it. And to me, also, kind of like the way you're saying, it was very memorable. I, I think just seeing it was like that awkward giant just getting knocked down to the mat and just changing the course of, you know, that division. Who's going to be the new the new guy that's going to take over? And I don't know, man. That, that To me, that knockout there was fantastic and something that should be talked about more often. Go ahead. I, I, I knew it was a, it was bound to happen ever since Erickson Lubin right. knocked him right. down that where, where, where they had to stop the fight. Erickson Lubin's face was, yeah. you know, so blown up when Erickson Lubin locked him, knocked him down. I knew right there, this dude can get KO'd. You know, right. he was calling out spins, bro. He was calling I out spins. That. I remember yeah. that. You know that uh, would have been that would have been you know, but it, it, I wanted to see that. But and um, but yeah, I remember that fight. It was out of nowhere, bro. It, yeah, it, it was out of nowhere. nowhere. But I heard that that Brian Mendoza guy was a a, a really good boxer, really mm -hmm. good fighter. He had beaten somebody. I don't remember who it was. Probably before that. Right. And um, I think he had beaten uh, Ramirez. Uh, okay. Jose, uh, Ramirez from the RGBA uh, camp. And anyways. And um, yeah, he got the knockout. He, he clean the, knockout, the clean knockout, bro. Uh, yeah, I'm the the you, towering that, I, inferno went down. Towering inferno, right? And that's the funny thing. Like I just the second I saw it, that little toy, I, I I wish I remembered the specific name for it, but it was always those little erect toys, and then you hit the little button, and it just crumbles, and then you let go of the button, it goes back up. Mm. It, that, that's what it reminded me of this knockout for Sebastian. Let me ask you this before we move on. What do you think about Sebastian? Remember, he got a lot of heat a couple of years ago. Did you really ever buy into the the hysteria for that guy? Um, um it, he was no, no. I I wasn't gonna buy it, him getting into the the you know with the dogs with the right, real right. dogs. Right. Um, it, it, his his legs were too lanky, bro. It, it, they just were, man. And mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, kudos to the guy. For you know, getting as far as he got. Now, I'm not saying his career's over, but right. but I mean, dude, there's bigger punches out there, you right. know. And and I just don't think he'd go that far, in my opinion. Were there any uh, knockouts that you left out? Maybe that you're like, uh. yeah, knockouts. Uh, yes, I left out. I left out um, 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 the 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 Steph Fulton versus an anywhere. When oh, anyway knocked out, oh, yeah, bro. yeah, definitely. That bro. one was definitely. that, yeah. I mean, I don't know if this is considered a knockout, but the stoppage of, of Errol Spence, right? You know, right. and um, TKO, um, yeah, TKO. And I know I'm missing one good one, but the one are, I left off, yeah, those are fantastic, those are memorable. But the one I left off that stuck out to me was Ocampo and Tim Zhu, bro. You oh, know, okay, 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 in that first round, just. Knocks him down early within the first couple of seconds, and then 
little pitter patter, and then just ends Ocampo right there. Yeah. And you know, yeah. to me, that was more like okay, Zoo is kind of like his father, a little bit of a thumper. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we'll leave off on knockout of the year. Do you have any final words on that? No, no, no. Yeah. The, those were good knockouts. Okay, so let's go to fight of the year for 2023. What is your fight of the year? Talk to me, brother. Yeah, my fight of the year, people, you know, start to think of the most recent stuff. But my fight of the year was Lomachenko versus Devin Haney. Oh, talk, Dude, very, controversial, that was, very controversial. That was a beautiful um, show uh, exhibition of boxing mm-hmm. skills, bro. Mm-hmm. What you know, what what Lomachenko is famous for, his style. What what Devin Haney is famous for. I mean, they win all twelve rounds, bro. Right. And we got to see the best of each other for twelve rounds. It's man. true. It's true. Um, hey, dude, that that is one of the fights, man. That that kept me off my seat. Right, you know, right. yeah, you know, bro. like I, it kept me off my seat, bro. I took the day off to see that fight. <laughs> I knew it was going to be good, and um, that was, you know, I can't forget it, bro. That was that was my fight of the year. No, man, with the Devin Haney Lomachenko, very controversial. Even to this day, people are saying that Haney did not deserve that win. And you know, you and I, you know, we've had many discussions about Haney and. And we might talk about him again. I'm not really sure. But uh, with that Lomachenko fight, bro, you just saw. This is where the respect for Haney for me comes in, bro. Nobody in that division really wants to fight Lomachenko. And Devin Haney knew, you know what, man? This is a boxer where if I take it on, not only will it cement me as a fighter for now, but looking at my resume 10, 15, 20 years after I retire, the fact that I have Lomachenko on there is more like a badge of honor, I think, yeah. for him. That's who Lomachenko, that's what Lomachenko has become. We need to have a conversation, an episode on Lomachenko's uh, a legacy, if he's overrated, underrated, that kind of thing, because that's an interesting fighter to me that deserves uh, that kind of analysis. But going back to the fight, yeah, bro, that fight was controversial. Who did you have winning after all, anyways? Look, the night of the fight, I had Lomachenko. Yeah. The night of the fight. But right. I had to see it again the next morning without the, all the chaos and the people around me and, you know, all the, you know, whatever. I saw it the next morning. And I had it, bro. The Haney winning the fight. I, yeah. think, that, I think that Loma just didn't do enough to, mm-hmm. to, you know, to win that fight, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments on that, and that is okay. So, yeah. for me, my fight of the year is a little, might be a little controversial, but I just love the banging in it, man. And it is Jaime Munguia versus Derevichenko. I could probably butcher his name uh, very well, but bro, that fight from beginning to end reminded me, coincidentally, of Munguia's trainer of Eric Morales and versus Barrera or Pac or uh, or yeah Pacquiao. It just reminded me of that kind of style. Considering that they're at the super middleweight division, Munguia showed me in that fight, bro, that considering that it was banging and banging the whole time. I actually liked his style. And in my opinion, if he was to bring, I know there's a lot of heat, a lot of controversy. If Canelo is going to step in the ring with him or not. I don't know if Canelo wants that fight, bro. Cause Munguia for one thing can take a punch. And for another thing, he's not afraid to get into that phone booth, man. And I don't know. That's just my opinion. You have any thoughts on that? fight? So you you, so you think that Munguia would give Canelo problems? It's an awkward fight, bro, because Munguia, he has an iron chin also. I don't, I don't think, leave me in the comments. I'm not really sure. I don't think he's ever hit the mat, bro. And I, I just think it's, it could be one of those fights where it's uh, like styles make fights. And I don't know if Canelo would want to thump with that kind of fighter. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I don't what know. What is Munguia, he, 160? 
No, he's 168. He's 168. You know? Yeah, man. So do you, think, do you think for him to maybe get a fight with uh, Canelo, he should take an offer against maybe uh, Jamal Charlo? Jamal Charlo? I know he goes from 160 to 168. Uh, Munguia does. But, um, man. Yeah, well, I would love to see um, Munguia get a little bit more fights, a little bit more battles to under his under his, under his his belt. I mean, he's, then again, he is 42-0, and 0, if I'm not mistaken. So... For me, I just think it would be an awkward fight for Canelo. I don't know if he wants to get in the ring with a fighter that is that hungry right now, just in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. You have any thoughts on that? Is a question. Is Derichenko like the best guy he has on his resume? Uh, I would say currently, yes. Uh, Derichenko, I mean... Yevchenko is one of those fighters that, you know, it's going to be a bloodbath. Every one of those fights, if Yevchenko could have finished out the fight, I think he probably would have won that fight or maybe pulled off a draw. But, bro, Munguia, yes, that was probably his best fight. But he's just not, in my opinion, he's not afraid to get in there, bro. I think... Canelo, this is one of those fights where Canelo needs a knockout and he's not going to get it going against Munguia. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All That's right. just my thought. Well, well, what do you, well, tell me what you think about Munguia and that Canelo crossover possibly happening. Yeah, it, let, let's, just, let's just make believe. I, if Canelo and Munguia would fight, um, I think that, that, that Canelo, in my opinion, my yeah. opinion, in my opinion, Canelo is 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 when it comes to skill wise, yeah. Um, I don't know about endurance, but skill wise, right. uh, Canelo's above him. Endurance, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Endurance, I think, I think, I can, I think that maybe Munguia could take him into deep waters mm -hmm. when it comes to endurance, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, bro. I, I, I mean, of course, I think Canelo will win. There's just yeah. nothing that 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 Munguia can show me that oh you can beat Canelo. There's nothing like that. In I agree opinion. with you. I agree with you that the skill part is one thing. Yes, definitely. But sometimes, bro, we've seen it with all the greats. You could go with Ali. You could go with uh, with uh, Foreman when he made his comeback. You could do it with anybody, bro. I'm pretty sure we're gonna talk about some in a minute. There's sometimes where they underestimate a fighter and these great. IQ fighters just get into a match that maybe they didn't want to fight into. And if anybody, in my opinion, can pull in Canelo to fight unorganized wise, it would be Munguia because I don't think he's afraid to get hit. I But that's considering the skill thing. I mean, if my opinion, if he didn't knock down, if he didn't knock down um, uh, Dervichenko in that last round, it probably would have been a draw, in my opinion. That's just what mm. I'm saying. Wow, but okay. anyway, anyways, I'm just saying because he's not afraid to bang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so that was a good call right there. I mean, you have any other uh, fights, fight of the fight of the year that you might have left off? A fight of the year? Um, yeah. I mean, a, a dude, uh, I love the Josh Taylor Theo fight, bro. I mm. really did, man. Right. I mean right. that that fight. <laughs> Believe it, uh, you know. For those that don't know, I'm a Tio fan. Um, right. That showed me that Tio has has a lot in the tank. You right. know what I'm saying? Um, do you think? Do you think Tio Fimo could have knocked him out? Like he was playing with him already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was toying with him already, bro. Mm -hmm. Tio was mm -hmm. having a ball in there. Right. There was there was a moment in the fight, I, you know, I don't remember what round it was, where he told his dad, "I got it, like I got him, right. yeah, you know, you know, I got him, like I, yeah, you know, I already took his biggest punch, blah blah blah, you know, I know his speed, you know, from there he was having he was having fun. What I love is I like how these lightweights are moving up to super, uh, like Ryan Garcia, Haney, and Teofimo, because they look good and they look comfortable there, brother. You know, I would even advise them to go down ever again. I mean, I know there is a lot of good fighters at 135, 
But I think 140 is where it's at. I think they're going to get rid of, I think Teofimo, Haney, and Garcia, I think they're going to get rid of the old guard that was there before, like Taylor and all them, uh, uh, Romero, everybody. And these guys are going to keep are, are going to keep 140 very exciting and very active for the next year, two years, maybe yeah. three years in the future. All right, so let's go to the drum roll. What everybody wants to know: Who is your fighter of the year, brother? The boxer of the year for me has to be Terence Crawford. Ooh, but he only yeah. fought one time. He, he's my fighter of the year, bro. Right, he, it, 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 it was a, it was a long anticipated fight that mm -hmm. was, in my eyes at least, and many many other people that he was going to get mauled and knocked out. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was going to get mauled and knocked out. The, you know, everything was stacked against him, bro. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, I had him by knockout. So did you, I think. You know, yeah. I, uh, T uh, Spence. I thought it was and, just going to um, be like a TKO. Like, all right. Yeah, I know, bro. I did, um, I did. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was a long-awaited fight, bro. And, and, I mean, dude, it was not just about how... He, the fights ended. Mm -hmm. It was about how he did it, bro. Right, right, right. He completely made an A-level fighter. Mm -hmm. Okay? An A-level fighter looked like a C, bro. He did. He, he took did. all his weapons from him. Mm -hmm. Dude, I mean, he completely just shut down Spence. Getting him a, giving him a beating, bro, where the people... Start even the fans of Bud, mm -hmm. you know, were feeling sorry for Spence, man. Right, right. That was one of the most brutal beatings I've ever seen, you know, in past I'm gonna say past 10, 15, 20 years, bro. Mm. That was a brutal beating. Terrence Crawford for me, what he did, um, and uh, you know. His persona, everything about him, bro. For me, he is my fighter of the year. I'm, you know what, man? Like, I cannot have him my number one because I just need more. I mean, yes, he took out a top five. He's the only one out of everybody that's that's taken out a top five p, uh, pound for pound guy uh, in boxing currently, and he did it in such a convincing, transcendent fashion that I can understand why you have him as your number one fighter of the year, pound for pound probably, um, and why most people do. But for me personally, brother, I need more, at least one more fight. I mean, we're, not, we're, we're past the days where people are going to fight four or five times a year. That's yeah, the, that's not going to happen. You know, uh, but I at least need two because it shows you. I mean, when was that fight? In July? He could have fought again in November, you know. I mean, he was hardly touched in that July fight. He could have taken a month off, trained in September, October, had a fight, maybe around this time of year, maybe early January. But we, I mean, do you know who he's going to fight next? I don't know who he's going to fight next. He's not at that age right now where he can take his time. I don't know. That's just me. For me, I couldn't pick him number one. I respect him tremendously. I think he is currently one or two pound for pound right now. But for me, I just need one. I need at least one more fight, bro. Maybe uh, him at 154 against Charlo or the rematch. Well, he was not going to get the rematch. That rematch, is not to me, it's not going to happen for a while because I think Spence needs to heal even more. Uh, or one of the Charlos, but or maybe even Zoo at 154. But I just need a little bit more activity for me to have him my number one overall. Okay. So that's my gripe about that. I'm okay with it. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay with him being number one, but I just need a little bit more. Okay. Probably uh, most impressive fight of the year would probably, will definitely be Crawford. But for me, my fight of the year is in a way just simply based on not only his activity, but the way, but bro, the way he's been extinguishing these boxers from Fulton to Topales from this uh, from his last fight, it's it's to a point where it's not even fair in that featherweight super featherweight division. 
you know, you and I've had to talk about in a way's power and what's the difference between his body punches and Canelo's body punches. For me, Canelo, when he punches in the body, it's a full follow through. Like you're going to feel it from one side of the rib to the other side of the rib. For in a way, at least in my opinion, he has this tight, compact punch, bro, that is so quick with reflexes and just ingen uh, ingenuity, in my opinion. Just like ingenu ingenuity, I can't say that stupid word, where it's not going to go through, but that little impact that he has, it's like a, it reminds me of the Black Cat firework when you just light it and it just pops in one yeah. second. But it does the damage. Like that, his way of fighting, his way of compact, compacting his punch, his foot movement is genius, in my opinion. And I don't see anybody defeating him anytime soon, especially in that division, as I call it right now. I mean, I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? So, you have any thoughts on in a way being number one? Yeah, I, I want to see him in America, bro. I mean, you know he's fought saying? in America. He's fought, what, three times in America? Where, 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 so, uh, uh, where did he fight Fulton? He fought, I know he fought. Well, I know that. He fought in Japan, but he's fought in America. Uh, uh, who you did know? he fight in America? Do you remember? I don't remember. It was such a while back. I understand why people want him to fight in America um, more often. But, bro, like, who, who else is going to take out in that division? There, there's nobody I mean, in that division. Not anymore. You know, well, there's, I mean, there's there's nobody in that division. Um, um, I would say this: he, okay. you know, he did join uh, Terrence Crawford on becoming a two-time unified champ. You know, I mean, you know, we're talking about one A, one B here. Uh, look, he's 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 fighting the people in front of him, bro. You know, what I'm saying whether they're worthy or not, and not only that, but he's doing it in a convincing fashion. Maybe he could get a rematch with Fulton in Vegas. You know, now we fight him, but I don't know, dude. The way Fulton came out into that fight, I know that a lot of people were saying Fulton would have been too much for him. But, bro, he not only took care of Fulton, he took care of the bigger boxer, and he did it fast and rapidly. And I don't see how Fulton can ever recover that to becoming dominant, to becoming the face again in that division. I just don't see it anytime soon. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry I cut you off. Yeah, no. Um, I would love to see him here in America. I would love, I'd love to see him go, uh, or maybe a catchweight with Shakur. I think honestly, he could beat Shakur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah um, I, I actually I, agree with I, that. I, I actually think he can. I know it's mm -hmm. gonna, you know, piss some people off in the comment section, but I think the skills that anyway has would be too much. Uh, especially if there was a way. I know we're just. It's just wishful thinking here. But if anyway was a 130 pounder, bro, he'd be giving mm -hmm. a lot of these people problems. In my uh, opinion. And and look, man, I mean, look. With Fulton, a lot of people are saying, well, he should fight him here in America. I think we're trying to cover for that because honestly, bro, I don't see where Fulton even had a chance from round one to the knockout. Dude, it was complete and utter domination. What other boxer right now has that kind of footwork and that kind of impact of power other than in a way, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'll admit before COVID and, and, and that's another thing that's impressing me with COVID. I mean, with COVID, I'm sorry, with, uh, with in a way is that he wanted to make up for the, the, the time loss that he had to take off when COVID happened. And he's, he's, he even stated like, you know, me fighting more often than usual I feel like I'm making up for that lost time. So we're going to see even more in a way at this time. I I'll give credit to Topales. He did a pretty good fight. Uh, he was about to get dominated within those first three to four rounds. And then he kind of turned around. He kind of did a shoulder roll kind of technique, little peekaboo style for uh, Topales in that fight. And that little, that delayed the inevitable a little bit. That gave uh, Topales a little bit longer life as he would go down in the 10th round. But, bro, I don't see how anybody in the 120s to 130s can even survive a body shot from in a way at this time. So that is my number one boxer of the year. Do you, do you have anybody you left off as your number one? Yeah, well, one of them was in a way. Devin Haney. 
Devin Ooh, Haney, okay, bro. Okay. I mean, there's nobody, yeah, you know, there's nobody busier than Haney, bro. I, I agree, mean, bro. yeah, uh, Canelo Alvarez. I mean, dude, it's like these guys are, you know, um, they're they're giving the fans what we want to see, bro. Right. Haney, right. Haney, Haney is is already, dude. Haney had just be, been reaches, bro, and was already mm-hmm. calling out Tank, signed the contract. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? He even saw, he even sent an offer to Shakur. You know, I mean, the guy is for me. You know, I, I mean, I put Terrence because of the Spence fight, and I wanted to make it a little, you know, more. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, just spread it around. But right, right. you know that everybody knows that uh, Haney is my favorite fighter, and uh, and I got Haney, man, right there. Um, Haney is excellent, bro. Uh, for me, it was Navarrete. Because he is one of the few that have actually fought three times this year, more than twice. And mm. honestly, bro, if he did not have that draw against Robson, uh, was it uh, Canesau, if I'm not mistaken? If he would not have gotten that draw and taken that fight a little bit more seriously, bro, because that's been his that's been his mo, right? The, the lazy trainer, the la- he doesn't train well, that kind of thing. If he would have taken that fight a little seriously and not gotten the draw and gone three and zero in this in this uh in this year, I probably would have had him over in a way based on his impressive wins and his activity, man. I gotta have a little bit more activity. So I'm cool with that. Do you have any final words uh for our audience out there? Yeah, hey, thank you guys for helping us reach 500 subscribers. Yes, and sir. um thank you for the the you know the comments, the likes. You know, the um, just keep on uh, watching our videos. If there's any topics I want us to talk about, let us yeah. know and we'll cover a topic. Absolutely, man. We appreciate all the love, everything you guys have given to us. I want to apologize personally. I've been a little slow on the comments, but I will make it up to you guys as much as possible. Responding to you guys soon. I am Trey at the Stick and Move podcast. Sam is Stick and Move Sam 75. And like I always say, don't forget to stick and move, baby. I am the greatest. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass.